Well, here we are again. As you can see, I've been plugging away at my Type 51, getting through the list. Most people seem to be interested in the Type 51, and I thought in this video, I'd just document how Bugatti got from the early Type 35 two litre car to the Type 51. The uh, line of Grand Prix cars that were the most winning Grand Prix car ever, something like a thousand Grand Prix. So initially it was a Type 35 two litre Grand Prix. Then it was increased to 2.3 litres by increasing the stroke to make the 35T for Target Florio. And then Bugatti supercharged the cars. This made a 35, a 35C Avec compressor and the 35T, a 35TC. The TC we always call the 35B and I'm not entirely sure why. The first of the cars had the smaller 270 mil brakes and the split rims, which were carried over from the Type 35. Later on, the brakes got bigger, went from 270 mil to 330 mil. In this guise, the car raced, or a series of cars raced until the late 20s, by which time they were starting to be outclassed by the Maseratis and the Alfa Romeos, which were notably twin cams. Bugatti et al, the old man by now, had had enough of cars pretty much and was doing other things and Jean was running the factory. So they obtained a couple of Miller racing cars from the States, which were obviously twin cam. Took the engines out, put the engines on the dyno. Couldn't believe the power they made. So they decided to essentially just copy the top end of the Miller and put it onto the bottom end, the Type 35. I don't think that would have happened if Bugatti Etor was in charge. Etor was pretty stubborn and convinced of the right way to build cars. And that I don't think included twin cams. He liked the single cams. So I always think of the two periods of Bugatti as the single cam period, which is Etor, and the twin cam period, which is Jean. Etor Bugatti was introduced to the twin cam quite early because the Miller engines were influenced by the Grand Prix Peugeot engine, which went and raced at Indianapolis. And the, Miller, the Peugeot car was built by a group of people called the charlatans. They were called the charlatans because the people who were at the Peugeot factory thought they were stealing money basically off of Peugeot to build a car outside of the factory. And the deal with Peugeot was that they would have a match race with a good car designed in a pretty traditional way by a Peugeot designer. And whoever won the match race, that'd be the car they race. Well, obviously, the charlatan's car, the twin cam car won, but the other car was designed by Bugatti. Now, knowing what Bugatti was like, or assuming I know what Bugatti was like, I could imagine that the whole twin cam, single cam thing kept him going with a single cam type design just to prove he was right. But anyway, they copied the top end of the Miller into a twin cam block even copying the radius cam followers that were in the Miller. And I believe them, a cam follower from the 51 will even fit a Miller. They went from a three lobe supercharger to a two lobe supercharger. And they got the drives to the camshafts from the standard 35 vertical drive, driving the single cam by creating a front drive which had bevel gears and spur gears driving up to the camshafts. The Type 51 engine, or twin cam engine, for me is particularly good as a road engine over a 35 because the 35s are quite fussy, whereas the twin cam just isn't. So in a 55 like this, they fit really well but they were built for Grand Prix cars. 
So this is a Type 51 Grand Prix car. Real thing. So you've got the 51 engine, which is the twin cam engine, two lobe supercharger, big brakes. They then went to well based wheels and twin fillers. Twin fillers because by now we're getting into exotic fuels, more exotic fuels, so refueling became a thing. So one filler, you dump the fuel in in the fuel churn, and the other filler lets the air out. But in real terms, the whole car is very much like a 35. The other thing that's noticeable on a 51 is that the blow off valve is lower, which means the hole in the bonnet is lower. And that's about the only way you can tell a 51 from a 35B, especially late 35B, which also would have had the twin fillers because they raced contemporaneously. 51 on petrol gives about 150 horsepower. 35B on petrol about 135 horsepower. 35C on petrol. 120, 125, and a 35T, something over 100, 105. But then you get to the magic ingredient, methanol. If you run a normal unsupercharged car on methanol, you see about a 12% increase in power. So on a 35C, we, 35T, we see about 120 horsepower, 125 horsepower, which is enough because they handle better the 35Ts and the supercharged cars because when they supercharge the cars they move the radiators forward and they got bigger which moves the centre of gravity forward and puts more weight over the front axle so the unsupercharged cars actually feel better when you're racing them hard and with 125 horsepower it will see off most supercharged cars but methanol when you apply it to a supercharged car because of the cooling effect on the inlet manifold you see an increase of power to around, well, for an average 35B, about 180 brake horsepower. We build a relatively good engine, you'll be knocking on 200 brake horsepower. And if you're very careful and spend a lot of time working on one, you can see upwards of 220 horsepower. And that's in a car that still weighs 750 kilograms. Type 51, strangely enough, it's very similar to standard 51, about 220 horsepower. But the thing with the Type 51 is the general architecture of the engine is a wide angle twin cam. And that was the kind of engine that was raced until well into the 60s when Keith Duckworth invented or designed the narrow angle twin cam and started to make some serious horsepower because it sorted out the combustion chamber problems. But we still have all those years of development. So with a bit of modification to the cam timings and a little bit of playing with the exhaust manifolds, you can see nearly 250 brake horsepower from a Type 51. One of the other things that's nice about Type 51 is that we are allowed to lose limited slip diffs, which is because the factory were playing with limited slip diffs at the time although they were quite crude and didn't work particularly well. But luckily enough, with the development of limit slip diffs, the modern ZF cam pool that we use, it's brilliant. So again, benefiting from development over the years. In the same way, in a way, the ERAs benefit from the fact they can run 16-inch 60s Formula 1 tyres because the 16-inch tyres and wheels on an ERA are no real benefit if you had to use pre-war tyres. So that's your Type 51. As I say, 250 horsepower, 750 kilos. Standing quarter, somewhere around 12 seconds, 12 to 13 seconds. And uh, in the standing kilometer, across the line at about 140 miles an hour. Now on my car, I've taken that development just a bit further. There's actually two engines. There's the standard-ish engine which is in it at the moment which has got standard cams and another engine which is flat tap it and also I'm not worried about the power band because obviously I'm going to be doing 6,000 revs most of the time but I'll go into that next time 
So I hope that was interesting. As I say, in the strange situation we find ourselves, wash your hands and social distance. But I do think that uh, the latest law that's been passed is a bit much, a bit strong for us. Losing money is one thing. You can always make money back. Giving up freedom is something completely different. You very rarely get your freedoms back. But we will see. So keep safe. And until next time, it's Tim.